on the line with Fari Hamzi. He's the founder of Hamzi Analytics. <laughs> Fari, Joel is out for the day, so you are joined by myself and Dennis live on the show. Bra- bravo. So they put a smart one in today. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking at in the market today, Fari? Well, the range, we're at 24 handles up from the low. Uh, we're up uh, about four plus. We tested uh, 1910. Uh, OTF right now is still showing 1911 as a retest, um, as a you know, pending today. I think there's a decent chance in, in the RTH. We may go and visit that. Um, uh, it, the, I had expected to be a, we should see a low today. So uh, the evening uh, session made sense. Now we shall see. We shall see. Remember, it's going to be a very thin uh, day because of Yom Kippur. Um, we shall see. We just got to play it very safe. It's been a, a couple of days of uh, stressful trading, let's say that. So a lot of back and forth and uh, a couple of retests. And also uh, during lunchtime has been very, very thin. So it's yeah, we all have to be careful. And speaking of that, we were just saying before you got on the show how the fade trade's been working. It seems like if you're fading, you know, selling the rips, buying the dips, for the most part in the last few weeks, it's been working here. Um, it's just chasing, you know, like when the people who are coming in and chasing the price, those are the people that have been getting hurt. Is that how you're approaching this market, Very Like well, more from a we, fade we've trade been perspective? Trying to, we've been trying to surf it. We've been trying to surf it, not have a bias. Uh, and the, just the overall view We've been watching uh, the, uh, the, the the analog for 2011 uh, shifted, uh, I believe, uh, about three weeks, about three weeks, and so far it's held up decently. But if you go by that today, we should be going low and putting at least a temporary um, uh, local minimum. Uh, the big test, in my opinion. If the work is right, would be around the 20th to 20. Let's see, it's, in, it's going to be in October. It'll be, let's see, between. Um, uh, it will be around 20th of October. Should be the the low for the year. But we'll have some jagged moves, and then there will be a sharp drop. Then. What uh, are your thoughts? I was just going to take you away then from the – sorry to interrupt you there, Fari. So then I was going to take you over because you've given us your thoughts on your S&P. What are your thoughts on oil here? It's really in a tight range here really for the last month, kind of digesting the move from the $39 area back up into the mid-40s here. What are your longer-term thoughts here on oil now? I think um, we should be seeing a little bit of lift here just from look, looking at uh, what, uh, how OTF uh, has been – when we start actually tracking a CL – uh, on OTF, this, the current uh, contract is November, CLX 15, I think as of yesterday. Uh, it made a decent, uh, put a decent low on the 21st, around 44 and a half. Looks like it's trying to go up at least test 48 area. I'm not sure we're going to go beyond that right now, but seems like 44 to 48 is uh, the range area. I'll be surprised if we see 50. While we're asking you, we might as well ask your thoughts here on gold, too. Gold's just kind of been hanging out. We're out trading up about a half a percent here this morning. What are your thoughts on gold? We don't trade gold. We just really basically track GLD. As a matter of fact, I don't even trade uh, CL, but it's a good indicator for the market. And between CL and Apple, if you watch those two, I think you have a good handle on S&P. Gold, we kind of don't look at it. We do see it's uh, block trades. Uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, right at its uh, OTF center line, about 108. The uh, range is 105 to 111. That's what it's projected. That's GLD. Fari, it's Yom Kippur today, and so do you follow that old adage of uh, buy Rosh Hashanah, sell a Yom Kippur? Uh, y- yes, but this year it seems like it's inverted, so we shall see. Really? Um, okay. If you look at it, you know, we, we kind of ran up a little bit. Uh, the, but in the past, yes, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, from people I learned, the basics of uh, market timing, that was one of their axioms. This one you always uh, pay attention to. But if you look at, uh, uh, I guess maybe the Fed caused this, was different this time. And uh, also, it, it, it was, I think, a combination of Fed 
and not being on Wednesday, being on Thursday because of the start of the high holidays, you know, Rosh Hashanah, and that put next to a, a quarterly expiration, you know, quad witching. That's why Friday was crazy, absolutely nuts. Right. And uh, the, I, I think we shifted the, that axiom this year. Yeah, that Friday, actually, this uh, quadruple witch was a little bit crazy there, Fari. How do you approach, let's just go back and talk about the option expiration days, the big third Fridays of the month. Are those, and those typically can sometimes be reversal days. We thought, saw it back in March of this year when the biotechs topped out that day. Um, a lot of times you see these big turns and reversals on these third Fridays. What do you do? How do you approach trading you know, on the big option expiration days? Well, I try to not to trade the last hour. Because as you get into the uh, uh, you know, afternoon and toward the close, as you know, the market makers try to pin certain key names. For right. example, like Apple, uh, Google, and so on, based on the OI, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the open interest they have and what they have on their books. And they actually sit interns there and say, buy the cash, spend 50 grand. If it goes up two cents above this, let's say 111, is what they're, uh, or let's say 110 is their big OI. Goes 110, 15, sell it. Comes down to 109, uh, 85 or 80, buy it. Trying to pinpoint that. So it's difficult to trade that indices that period of time. I think you'll probably have a better chance, especially on the quad witchings, which is the futures are expiring the, that, that, that quarter. You have a better chance of trading it, let's say, uh, an hour before the market opens into about 45 minutes after the market opens. As you know, with 500 names in S&P, it takes a while to all of them to give, give, give an opening print. And because of that, actually, there's, I think there's some manipulation going on because that will dictate what the future settlement is going to be, what's called SET, SET. And uh, so th that period has got some decent volatility. As you go into the day, it drops, and then toward the afternoons, there's almost very little volatility. Now, again, this Friday was a little bit an exception. A uh, couple of our bigger traders, they take a day off, as a rule. Expiration, they don't want to be around. Let's jump into individual stocks here, Fari. We were talking a little fang. We talked Facebook already. We talked Amazon. We talked Google. We haven't talked Netflix here yet, so let's get your thoughts on Netflix. If we look at NFLX, it's obviously significantly off the highs that it set when everybody wanted to own it back at 129.29. Yeah. Then we had the flash crash breakdown all the way down to 85 bucks, and then we started to bounce, and then we came down to retest. We're just hanging out here. Right under 100 bucks here is the critical triple digit number on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, in Sigma Channel land, what do you see on Netflix? Uh, it shows some weakness right now. It has had a hard time getting above uh, zero sig, and right above it is 50 bar. So, uh, 50 bar, a lot of 50, 50 day moving average. That's really viewed by a lot of people. For me, if it drops below here, uh, I'm, I'm talking about as of cash settlement of yesterday, not the pre open right now. But if it drops below, let's take 98.40 to let's take to 98. If it gets, let's take the 98, make it easy. If we drop below 98, we're going to get back into a channel of uh, a drip, drip, you know, a bleeding toward the downside. The, the fact that we, and we were in that channel for a while. We came back on uh, 15th of uh, September and, and also the following day, 16th, there were two good days it had. But unfortunately... We did not have a close above uh, zero sig. And yesterday we were at negative one sigma. We better keep one sigma and come back up. Otherwise, I think it will be the channel between negative one to negative two. Historically, almost all the stocks, when they get into that channel, they just dribble down and there's weakness coming. Jumping into other specific stocks here, Fari, what about some of these old school tech stocks? Just looking here, like a Microsoft or Intel. What are your okay. thoughts here? And somebody's asking about Micron here this morning. What are your thoughts okay. on some of the old school tech stocks? Well, on um, Microsoft, I thought yesterday it showed. Uh, let me try here. Uh, it, it showed some strength that was uh, that was interesting. Where Apple was not performing, Microsoft was, and the other one was, of course, was Amazon. Um, I, I don't watch Intel as much as I used to. But I do watch Microsoft quite a bit. Actually, 
the five key names in, uh, in the NDX I watch are Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and uh, Facebook. Uh, not, not, you know, I, I should be looking at Netflix, but I haven't. This is the five I'm looking at. Uh, but Intel is not one of them, but I'd be more than happy to look at it right now. More of a, uh, not short term, but a little bit longer term. Because the ones I look at, there are five minutes. And they're short term, because when they start moving, especially Apple, you, you, obviously, you know, the, the impact on the SPX and SPS is heavy. Um, Intel, I don't know, it looks dead money to me. You know, the Sigma channels are very, very horizontal and parallel and very tight. Uh, it, they, they seem to, in the last uh, three to four sessions, they even gotten tighter, so they've coiled up. That usually precedes uh, expansion volatility. The issue is now which way. That we wouldn't know, but it's getting ready to go one way or another fast. Uh, but, but again, we were at 50 bar, we closed at 50 bar last night. Very quiet. Uh, let's see, Amazon. Let's look at that. Yeah, Amazon is, uh, I think it's a decent buy probably here. It, it seems like it's, it's uh, you know, continuous momentum. Uh, of course, you know, in, uh, in a, about a week plus, about two weeks from now, earnings season starts. Yeah. And historically, th this is the most interesting uh, uh, earnings season. I mean, I, I, January is good because of retail. But generally speaking, especially techs, this is a this is a good season to look at, so I hope they don't disappoint. What are your thoughts here as we come into earnings season? Obviously, uh, you know this, there's, there's there's some concerns here with the way the S and P's have traded, with the way the Fed has been talking here, that the earnings could be a little bit lighter here. What are your thoughts here as we come into the next earnings season? Uh, I think one should have uh, some puts on as insurance. I think they're going to be uh, in general. So I would. I would want to have some uh, out of the money puts in Qs and spies, generally speaking. The individual name is a little bit more difficult. You've you got to do more research on that. But uh, uh, it, it's, uh, I think you've got to pick them. You've got to pick the stocks, you know, in terms of uh, the bias you're looking for. And if you're not sure, either don't play it, or you may have to uh, have uh, uh, two, uh, two spreads on, the call spread and pull spread. Put a spread. And the moment one of them fail, one of them is going to fail. Obviously, then you wait at least three days, and then try to repair the leg that didn't work. Uh, if you're not sure and you don't want to do that, that's too complex. And it is, and it's, it could be a little bit costly. You got to make sure you pick them right. I would suggest you Sigma channels. Then uh, you avoid it because uh, you know. Then go, go to another name. Uh, I, but I think you're going to see some of the weaker or not top tier techs uh, be challenged. You, you see what's happening with GoPro right now, for example. So, uh, so some of that theme, I think, uh, will be there. Uh, let's look at Baba also. Yeah, Baba is just getting flushed. Uh, it's what, just 61, can't 90. catch a bet. It me? seems like every time it catches a bet, sellers come right in to sell it. There's just so much overhead supply in a stock like this. Everybody's underwater, basically, that's bought this stock ever. So it's right. just so difficult for this stock to get up off the ground and get going. Well, it hasn't based yet. It's just really it's still in a downward uh, Sigma channels. has not been able to get over zero SIG and since uh, July 24th. That's a long time. And we've had a lot of highs and lows in the market, but this one has been basically stuck under zero SIG with a negative slope. So the, 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 the uh, bias here is to, to be on the short side or, or at least uh, wait until it gets really, really flushed out. I would expect one should wait for uh, get the August 24th low taken out. And then see, that was uh, the low there was 58. Wait until 58 is taken out. Then we consider what kind of pattern you're in. And maybe if it's flattening out, you can go after it. But this would not be something I want to go long at yet. Larry, we've only got a couple minutes with you left. What's your take on something like GoPro right now? Well, you know, I never, uh, I, I think we traded the uh, option once and we, were, we got lucky. 
I don't think there was a skill involved there. Very, very early on. We haven't touched it recently. Actually, Ethan probably would be better for that. Uh, he, has, he has posted some charts and some comments. But the, the, what, what worries me is that the weekly charts for GoPro on a, on a Sigma channel basis. You know, it was a two Sigma uh, back in uh, mid-August. Right now, it's struggling to, uh, be, to, uh, to hold to negative two Sigma. You know, two weeks, uh, four weeks ago and three weeks ago, it closed, closed at negative three Sigma weekly. So the weakness in the stock is heavy. Uh, I suspect there are a lot of shorts now. The probably, but I, I heard something like 70%. Uh, the, the, the shorts should be heavy here. If we can, if we can hold on, then maybe you, you're going to bounce up and the shorts have to uh, fold. But uh, for now, uh, what I see, I think there are better names out there you can play with. Uh, you know, some of the names, like for example, we have no weekly, uh, monthly chart on it in terms of uh, Sigma Channel because it's so new. It's less than a year old. So, you know, it, I think it's, it's I, or maybe it's a little bit over a year old, but we, 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 it's not 20 months yet. We don't have even one bar that's plotting for Sigma Channel. Uh, I usually avoid names this early. Uh, I, I want to see some consistency in the earnings. Uh, not a lot of management changes, not a lot of product changes, maybe new products only. Um, and they're being good at that. Um, I think on the retail side, probably uh, they, they're winning hearts and minds of customers, but not necessarily the investors. Investors are probably a little bit worried here. We've been on the line with Fari Hamzi. He's the founder of Hamzi Analytics, and he joins us every Wednesday morning. Fari, thanks for coming on the show today. As always, we really appreciate and have a great time talking to you, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Fari. Bye-bye.